it's August 11th here in Michigan and it's that time of year when we start thinking about our weaker colonies and how we're going to prepare them so that they are ready for the winter. So I figured what better time than now to tell you guys some of my tips for how to get your weaker colonies stronger so that they go into the winter ready. I've actually made this mistake myself, but since correcting it, I am really noticing the difference in my weaker colonies. And that is not giving those weak colonies more space than that they can handle. It was brought to my attention that actually when you put on foundation before that hive is ready for all of that foundation, you're actually hampering that colony because now they have to work twice as hard just to maintain temperature and patrol the area to make sure it's protected from any pests. So one of the things I have done for my really small colonies is I bought a little bit of insulation foam. I cut it, measured it out and cut it so that it would fit the box perfectly. And I just slid all the frames over only gave them enough foundation that they would need and then just left the other half empty as you're seeing here. Bees perform better when they're kind of crowded in a small space. So this way they can maintain their temperature better. They can guard and patrol all of the frames that they have and protect them from any pests from coming in. Now for some of your bigger colonies that might be filling out part of a uh, bottom brood box. I like to make use of what's called checkerboarding and so what you would do is you would take an empty frame here actually I'll show you in here so it's a little bit easier to understand. So first you want to see how big that colony is, how many frames it's taking up. You want to keep in mind how many bees you're seeing in the hive and then checkerboard based off of that. You don't want to spread them out too thin across too many frames um, this would probably be really detrimental to the hive because they're just not enough numbers to be able to fill all the frames. So what you can do is take, say this frame was empty and this frame was brood. You could do a brood frame, empty frame, brood frame, brood frame, empty frame, just checkerboard it out based off of how big the hive is and how many bees they have so that they're able to fill out the frames that you did checkerboard. But also keep in mind that this time of year, if you are checkerboarding this late in the year, that you are going to have to feed like crazy. They don't want to draw out comb this late in the year, but they can. It is possible. Don't let people tell you it's not because all of my hives are drawing out comb right now. But you have to be feeding a lot. <laughs> so speaking of feeding, another tip is Personally, I'm noticing that in your weaker colonies, you really don't want to put in in-hive feeders because it will make the colony very vulnerable to getting robbed because other bees can smell it, other pests can smell it, um, and they'll bring in a lot of small hive beetles, and you, yeah, you don't want that in a weak colony. That's just going to put a lot more stress on them, so I'm doing this instead. So I'm making use of open feeding and it is working wonders. Now, this is nothing compared to what it was before. Um, prime time, this thing will be filled like with a thousand bees covering like all around the bottom. So I got this idea from Barnyard Bees. Go check out his video on open feeding buckets. Um, it's really simple. It, he's a genius for this because it, it works absolutely great, super cheap. Only cost me five bucks, however much the bucket costs. Now also, a lot of people are extracting some of their honey this year, and I do like to leave out the scraps for them to clean up. I just put this out here like 10 minutes ago, but this is gonna be flooded with bees pretty shortly here. Also, I am now looking over at this bucket that I left out for them, and I realized this was a terrible idea, so I will show you my mistake I am just now learning so that you don't make the same mistake. Yeah, so all these bees are drowning, yeah. Don't just leave a bucket out like this. This was not a good idea. Let's see if I can do that. But remember, the more food a or resources a colony can get, the stronger they're going to be. They're going to be able to build out that comb because they need some place to store all that food. And you're going to need that food for the winter time because those bees are going to need a lot of it. 
So as I was talking about why I think you should open feed and not just in hive feed, I mentioned small hive beetles. So I'll show you one of the things that I am using in my colonies because I've been seeing a lot of small hive beetles in some of my colonies. I'm noticing that some colonies are more susceptible to them. Other ones are very aggressive towards them. Um, I watched a bee literally grab a small hive beetle, ball it up and sting it and then fly it out. Like it was kind of cool to see, but not all breeds are like that. Um, a lot of them you'll just, you'll just watch a small hive beetle walk across the bottom board and the bees won't even care. So make sure you're killing all small hive beetles that you see in your inspections. At least try to kill as many as you can. Don't just leave them there because they can multiply. Now, my favorite thing to use are these beetle jails. Um, you just put them, I put them at the outsides of my hive in the bottom brood box. Um, the small hive beetles are, they literally are harassed by the bees and the bees will push them to the outer parts of the hive. So they're gonna collect in the corners. So that's where you want to put this, on the outside frames in between two frames. Um, I'll clip to a video that I took earlier today actually of me putting one in so that you can see where I put it in my placement. Now, what do you put in this? Um, I use apple cider vinegar. Um, this will attract the small hive beetles to the trap because it smells really good to them. Um, this is also why you don't want to use this in your in-hive feeding <laughs> because it will attract pests. It smells. so. And then um, I personally like to use something like olive oil, vegetable oil, any sort of oil that will pretty much drown them in the liquid and prevent them from being able to climb out and get out. But I didn't have any with me, so I actually just use my mixture of, ooh, I actually just used my <laughs> mixture of Dawn dish soap. Um, this is also very slippery. They're not gonna be able to get out. Um, fun fact, if you were to put a bunch of Dawn dish soap, dish soap in a pool, you would actually drown because you couldn't get out either. So yeah, pretty slippery stuff. This whole purpose of it is make it slippery so they can't get out, but they're drawn in by the apple cider vinegar. I have also heard some beekeepers saying that they like using peppermint candy. I've never personally used it before, but I've heard a lot of beekeepers say they have success with that. Just putting um, some of the Brax, I don't think I can pronounce that right, Brax, Brax, <laughs> whatever that brand is, um, of peppermint candy on the outsides, like the corners of your hive. They say that helps keep the small hive beetles out and they've never seen a small hive beetle in there since. So. I might try it to see if it works. It is worth mentioning that a strong colony can manage small hive beetle and wax moth on their own. It's the weaker colonies that are a little bit more vulnerable to them. So, <laughs> ah, did I catch that on camera? <laughs> uh, I guess it wants to go in my mouth. No, I do not want to eat you. Thank you, man. <laughs> but as I was saying, the stronger colonies can manage small hive beetle on their own. It's the weaker colonies that are more vulnerable to it. So just keep that in mind. So the next thing that I've made use of are robbing screens. So that is the number one thing for your weaker colonies, especially this time of year, is they can get robbed out and that will make them even weaker. Like I said, they need resources in order to grow and be strong, especially going into winter because they're gonna need that honey. So make use of something like a robbing screen. I also got this from Barnyard Bees. Um, he just has some great stuff, but all it is is just um, a screen that I cut out myself. You can buy a big roll of it, cut it out, measure it out, and then I just stapled it on and you just cut little bee doors in it and you can open them as that hive needs um, based off of how many bees are coming and going. And if you do see them getting robbed, what I like to do is just close up all the doors for a little bit um, or I will just open up one little door. So this is my weaker colony that I had split. So I only gave them this little door so that this is all they have to um, defend. This gives them less of a space that they have to keep out intruders instead of having this whole entire bottom board to have to defend. Um, that'd be really hard for a small colony because there's just not enough defending bees to do that. So this smaller space makes it a lot easier for them. 
So one thing I am noticing about these screens is they do shrink a little bit. So when you do put these on, make sure that you put them down a little farther than I did. Um, because as they shrink, it's going to start leaving a gap right here. And you don't really want that. You want these to last a while so you don't have to do it again. So yeah, just make sure you move the whole thing down. Um, if you have to bend it out a little bit just to fit it um, across the, the bottom board, that's okay. But just my little suggestion to help them last a little longer. The last thing that I want to mention, so a lot of you probably just extracted all of your honey that you're gonna take this year. If not now, then you're about to extract it. And what I like to do is give those frames to your weaker colonies. I'm gonna put these in all of my weaker colonies so that they can make use of this honey, clean it out, have drawn out comb for them that they can fill up easily. Um, so let, honestly, just let the bees do all of the cleaning up job after your extraction. It, that way, nothing is going to waste. They're using up all that honey, and they'll do a lot better because of it. So I hope all that was really helpful. I kind of made this video on the fly because I was thinking, hmm, I'm going around checking all my weaker colonies today, seeing what I need to do to make them a little bit stronger, giving them some frames putting up some beetle traps. So I thought you guys can make use of the same information that I'm going through in my head today. So I hope that helps you guys and I will see you guys in the next one.